is uh, the, my uh, presentation title is uh, Application of Raman Spectroscopy for Detection of uh, uh, Aflatoxins. Uh, as you know, so there are di diverse uh, microtoxins. Can you hear me? There. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are many uh, uh, microtoxin uh, analytical methods available in, in laboratory and non laboratory location. Uh, for example, gas chromatography and a high performance liquid chromatography and a mass spectrometry and recently biosensors. And this method is a reliable and accurate and precise. But uh, it's not, it's a, they, this method is expensive and complex and labor intensive and time consuming. Uh, so they, they, this method may not allow rapid screening of a uh, large number of samples at the collection point of uh, aflatoxin contaminated samples. Therefore, rapid, sensitive, and accurate method with minimum effort and cost for early screening of microtoxins uh, should be developed for, to offer the real-time monitoring of aflatoxin uh, contamination samples. So, uh, spectroscopic techniques such as uh, NIR, FTIR, free, uh, free uh, transport infrared spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy are attractive because uh, uh, with a single scan, they can provide qualitative and quantitative uh, information pertaining to uh, mycotoxin uh, component and structures. However, uh, in spite, uh, despite of uh, distinctive uh, uh, advantage of this technique, the application is uh, rather limited due to uh, difficult uh, Uh, because of uh, limited, uh, uh, because uh, application are rather, rather limited due to uh, difficult interpretation and uh, spectrum uh, overlapping. So. NIR, FTIR is a uh, is base, basically is uh, very attractive, but it's uh, sometimes it's a uh, uh, strong HOH bending of absorption of water molecules that distorted the uh, entire spectral uh, ranges. So Raman spectroscopy ha has uh, received a. Uh, Real retention in serial science and for detecting and investigating the uh, mycotoxin in brain cell. The principle, uh, principle of uh, this uh, Raman spectroscopy is to irradiate the uh, substance and detect the uh, scatter light. And difference in the uh, frequencies between the uh, incident and uh, scatter, scatter uh, radiation actually resulted in uh, characteristic uh, Raman uh, spectral. Uh, spectral. And Raman spectroscopy is based on the uh, polarizability of chemical bonds. And this method is uh, due to uh, sensitive, insensitive to water and uh, pure overlap bands. And so this uh, technique can provide more useful qualitative and quantitative information, providing uh, molecular level insight into uh, mycotoxin, including aflatoxins. So several, uh, there are several uh, variations of uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy. Uh, this uh, method has been uh, developed for higher sensitivity and improved uh, spatial resolution and very specific uh, information. Surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Conventional as a traditional Raman spectroscopy is required uh, bulk samples or concentrated solution. The uh, surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy uh, very is uh, much more uh, very attractive because uh, this is much more sensitive and also its LOD is uh, uh, reached uh, up to uh, PPB level or e even a uh, single uh, molecule level. So, uh, with the aid of uh, metallic uh, nanostructures, uh, single uh, spectra enhanced by uh, up to a million times uh, due to the uh, effect of electromagnetic field and then uh, chemometric uh, uh, chemical enhancement. So, uh, objective, of, objective of this uh, research is to explore the possibility of a Raman spectroscopic technique combined with uh, chemometrics uh, to develop a rapid, uh, expensive, and convenient spectroscopic method for uh, classification and quantification of uh, aflatoxin in contaminated uh, maize. So, this, this research might uh, have uh, provided a basis uh, and a useful uh, starting point to, to develop the robust model for 
uh, real-time monitoring and uh, high slope analysis of uh, aflatoxin contaminated samples to ensure the quality and the safety of uh, major product. So uh, for this uh, project, uh, ma uh, major samples uh, were obtained in the Office of Texas State Chemist uh, uh, regulatory sample and then uh, peer to inoculate the sample. Uh, total of 132 samples uh, with the aflatoxin concentration through to uh, 1200 uh, ppb sample were used. Uh, and then this uh, concentration should cover the uh, majority of uh, aflatoxin concentration found in uh, commercial made product uh, and the uh, routine surveillance samples. Uh, and so th this sample set might be uh, appropriate to uh, de de develop the uh, calibration model for uh, predictions. Uh, surface NS drama spectroscopy substrate was prepared uh, as follows. Uh, uh, silver nitrate and uh, distilled water and sodium oleate and oleic acid ethanol was put into uh, 20 milliliter glass vials. And then this glass vial was put into oven at uh, 150 Celsius for 24 hours. Uh, and then uh, this uh, glass, uh, uh, this was washed with uh, ethanol uh, three times and uh, dried to form uh, silver uh, nanocrystals. And silver nanocrystals in one milliliter cyclohexane was added to solution of 28 milliliter SDS in uh, one milliliter uh, distilled water, and then this solution was subjected to uh, ultrasonic treatment uh, for one hour and then uh, heated to safety Celsius uh, to remove the uh, cyclohexane to form uh, silver uh, nanospheres. Uh, Raman spectroscopy was a, a major the ground uh, major and the mixture of uh, surface analysis Raman spectroscopy and extractor was directly uh, analyzed by uh, Raman spectroscopy. We used uh, th this condition and then uh, spectral data uh, was processed into normalized, normalized uh, spectra and the first and the second derivative spectra and deconversion spectra. The reason, uh, reason of using uh, this uh, process, pre-processing of spectra is to eliminate the irrelevant uh, chemical uh, information uh, and extract the meaningful information to uh, improve the classification and the predictable accuracy. For aflatoxin uh, models, uh, classification models, uh, we use the Uh, we use the PIMA metric models, uh, uh, K realist uh, neighbor and uh, linear discriminant analysis, uh, and then uh, principal component uh, discriminant analysis, uh, and then uh, partialist scale uh, discriminant analysis. Uh. And then uh, for uh, this uh, chromatographic uh, uh, chemometric uh, model de development, uh, aflatoxin uh, was uh, uh, divided into five groups. Uh. The group one, uh, less than 20 ppb, is uh, considered as uh, uh, non-contaminated samples, and uh, and uh, 850 ppb greater than uh, 800 ppb uh, is a uh, group five highest concentrations. And then for uh, quantification model development, we use the uh, chemometric models, uh, multi uh, multiple linear regression, and principal component. Uh, uh, regression and the partialist, partialist squares uh, uh, regressions. Uh, basically, so for, for uh, classification and the quantification models, we uh, spectral data divided into 50, uh, 75% training uh, data uh, for calibration model uh, development, uh, and 25% uh, is uh, validation data for uh, testing the uh, models. And basically, so, uh, HPLC uh, reference measurement uh, one were used to compare the uh, compare and correlate with the uh, uh, Raman spectra through the uh, uh, developed uh, models. Uh, this uh, this is, uh, so figure shows the spectral difference between uh, contaminated and non-contaminated sample. Uh, these spectral regions actually so contain the some uh, regions rele relevant to uh, the cellular material of uh, fungi and then uh, alteration and inhibition of uh, uh, molecular systems. 
Uh, but it's, uh, honestly, it's, it's rather difficult to, that easy to uh, detect the aflatoxin because of uh, aflatoxin bands uh, sometimes uh, 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 interfere and uh, contribute from uh, other, uh, other uh, chemical functional groups. Uh, this is the uh, normalized uh, surface ns rama spectra. And you can see the, uh, this uh, distinctive, uh, distinctive uh, spectral regions. Uh, uh, surface NS the Rama spectroscopy has a higher sensitivity, uh, but it's uh, actually said that some Rama bands compared to uh, conventional Rama spectroscopy is a uh, Rama. There's a Rama shift is because of uh, uh, there's a uh, absorption variation uh, because of uh, some uh, charge transport between aflatoxin uh, molecule and then uh, silver nanocrystals, and. Uh, and also, it's, uh, some along with the uh, surface excitation of uh, uh, resonance, uh, uh, surface reson uh, resonance. And then, uh, this, uh, this figure shows the surface uh, uh, scanning uh, electron uh, microscope image of a uh, uh, mixture of uh, 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 silver nanocrystal and the uh, uh, sample extractor. Uh, basically, uh, as you see here, the silver nanocrystals uh, diverse uh, disperse the silver nanocrystal with the uh, uh, diverse uh, diameter could be seen uh, in this picture. So. And then this uh, nanocrystal actually is a form of blocks in the, into uh, silver uh, nanospheres. Uh, and the silver nanospheres uh, has a uh, diameter is uh, 60 and then 80 nanometers and the interspacing. Uh, at uh, one or two uh, nanometers, uh, on the excitation and the silver nanospheres uh, has uh, produced a strong ele electromagnetic uh, coupling effect for a signal uh, announcement, uh, uh, significant uh, signal uh, announcement, and then uh, there is a, a structural modification of uh, silver uh, nanospheres uh, after introduction of uh, uh, sample extract. Uh, this table shows the uh, correct uh, classification rate of uh, uh, three chemo matrix uh, uh, for aflatoxin analysis. Uh, uh, as you see here, is uh, the correct class classification uh, largely influenced by the uh, pre-processing method and then uh, chemo matrix method. Uh, as you see here, the best uh, best uh, chemo matrix models is uh, obtained from uh, linear discriminant analysis. Uh, the the training data set actually uh, shows the correct classification rate is 94.3%, uh, is 100%, uh, uh, and then uh, validation data set uh, shows the uh, approximately is 94.3%, uh, uh, is 100%. Uh, uh, and uh, this LDA model uh, didn't misclassify, misclassify the any contaminated samples as uh, aflatoxin negative, uh, uh, like this. Uh. And then uh, PLSDA models actually uh, produce a uh, very comparable result. Is, uh, the uh, prediction accuracy is 92.92% uh, uh, to 100%. Uh, uh, however, as, uh, uh, this uh, uh, model is uh, uh, produced uh, less accurate, uh, less uh, uh, accurate, uh, accurate correct, class, class, correct classification rate. Is, uh, the best model is uh, for PLS, best PLSDA model is uh, for just uh, uh, 91 uh, percent correctly classified. The PCDA, PCDA uh, uh, models is the worst, but it's, uh, uh, this model is uh, actually this model is uh, many is, uh, contaminated contaminated samples were uh, mis misclassified as a uh, aflatoxin uh, negative. So, uh, this uh, table shows the uh, classification result of. Uh, uh, surface NS the Raman spectroscopy. Uh, basically, uh, this model also is 100% uh, uh, correctly classified uh, uh, in the training data set. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, actually, uh, the, when the calibration model applied to the uh, validation data set, they just uh, produced a little bit lower uh, correct classification rate. Uh, only uh, these two uh, normalized, normalized uh, cross the pre processed uh, spectral data and then uh, deconvolution uh, pre-processed uh, spectral data is uh, uh, produced uh, uh, rather acceptable uh, correct classification rate. The 
uh, actually, uh, this is uh, uh, as uh, opposed to uh, what would be expected is a uh, uh, correct classification uh, rate is uh, the developed, uh, developed, uh, uh, developed with a uh, highly sensitive uh, surface analyzed Raman spectroscopy is uh, produced a lower uh, classification rate uh, because of uh, this is a uh, uh, this is because of uh, the, there's an absorption uh, variation between aflatoxin molecules and then uh, silver nanoparticles and also is uh, uh, other than uh, aflatoxin molecules uh, sometimes a bio uh, component is uh, they bind the uh, silver nanoparticle and actually that uh, low uh, low lowering the uh, the uh, Raman signals but it's a uh, 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 surface analyzed Raman spectroscopy is uh, require less uh, scanning area and also uh, require less uh, scanning times to produce the equivalent uh, spectra compared to uh, conventional uh, spectroscopy. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, figure shows the scat scatter plot uh, of a uh, canonical discriminant score plot. Uh, as you see here, so the major samples uh, within the same uh, aplatoxin groups actually stay uh, grouped together and then uh, aplatoxins with uh, uh, different uh, uh, aplatoxin concentration as uh, uh, remotely uh, controlled. Uh, this is the uh, uh, comparison of a three uh, different spectroscopic method. Uh, as you see here is uh, the uh, regardless of uh, spectroscopic method is the uh, uh, best uh, discriminant uh, uh, analysis result was obtained the uh, KNM models and then uh, K-realist neighbor models and then uh, linear discriminant analysis models. And, and, and it's, uh, as you see here, it's, uh, their uh, correlation, uh, correct correlation uh, rate is, uh, uh, is uh, greater than 90% uh, as uh, uh, FTIR also is a uh, correlation, uh, correct correlation rate is uh, uh, greater than uh, ninety percent. Uh, actually, the NIR also produced uh, a comparable result uh, for this uh, uh, three uh, uh, pre-processed spectra. However, the, the deconvolution uh, uh, pre-processed spectra models uh, uh, produced uh, uh, significantly lower uh, correct, uh, classification rate, is forty uh, uh, percent. And uh, PLSDA model actually uh, produced. Uh, uh, very so poor uh, predictive accuracy they display, uh, but it's, uh, un, uh, unlike other spectroscopic method, is a uh, FTIR is uh, actually uh, produced uh, uh, comparable result to uh, KNN and, and LDA models. Uh, I'm going to a little bit talk about the uh, uh, chemometry uh, quantification um, models for aplatoxins. Uh, as you see here, is uh, uh, the of uh, chemometry quantification model is a PLSR model uh, produced the uh, uh, best uh, uh, regression quality and uh, also is uh, they shows the uh, uh, very high predictable uh, accuracy and uh, as actually so the regression uh, slope of regression is close to one and then also they pre uh, shows the higher uh, R square value uh, coefficient determination uh, coefficient of determinations. Uh, and what is unfortunate is that uh, uh, this Raman spectroscopy is uh, not accurately uh, predict the very low concentration of uh, aplatoxins uh, because of uh, uh, in, uh, basically in inability of uh, Raman spectroscopy to detect the uh, internal uh, constituent uh, gradient and also it's an inhomogeneous uh, dis distribution of uh, uh, aflatoxins. And multiple linear regression models actually uh, they uh, perform better than uh, principal component uh, regression, um, but it's, uh, it's uh, not as good as uh, uh, PLSR uh, models. And uh, second derivative uh, spectra and the decomposition spectra actually so they have the uh, improved uh, performance of models. And uh, PCR models is a uh, produced uh, display of very poor uh, predictive accuracy. It's uh, just a uh, slope of regression is uh, 0 0.611, and then uh, validation is uh, 0 0.7 at uh, best. And we compare the uh, HPLC reference value and the Raman predicted values. As you see here, so 
there was no significant difference between uh, HPS uh, reference value and the predictive values. Uh, and uh, uh, correlation coefficient is, uh, was uh, higher for uh, multiple linear regression and the KLSR models, but it's uh, uh, rather moderate, uh, moderately uh, correlated uh, in uh, PCR models. Uh, and the standard error and the standard deviations uh, of uh, uh, paired, uh, paired uh, differences, uh, actually so they uh, seem to like follow the same trend as uh, uh, correlation coefficient. Uh, and then RPD value, so RPD value is, uh, if uh, RPD value is uh, greater than 3 and uh, these models uh, seems like it's uh, indicated uh, might be good uh, for uh, screening of uh, aflatoxin samples. Uh, this is the uh, uh, quantification, uh, uh, quantification models uh, based on the uh, surface NS drama spectroscopy. And then uh, this case is a uh, multiple linear regression models has uh, produced uh, uh, better uh, better uh, regression quality and uh, high predictable accuracy and uh, low prediction errors. Uh, they just uh, explained uh, uh, more than 90% variations uh, in spectra, uh, except for uh, one spectra. There is a second uh, derivative, uh, second derivative uh, models, uh, and surface NS drama spectroscopy models also is, uh, didn't accurately predict the uh, low uh, concentration, uh, particularly uh, below the 20 ppb uh, FDA uh, action levels. And, and there is a reason of uh, uh, low predictive accuracy is different with the uh, uh, conventional Raman spectroscopy. This is uh, uh, because of uh, uh, pro uh, most likely the uh, uh, absorption uh, variations between the aflatoxin molecules and then, and then it's uh, nanoparticles. Uh, and the PLSR models, uh, as you see here, is uh, actually PLSR models uh, produce the same uh, number of factors. That means uh, these models are uh, just have uh, equally moderate uh, level of accuracy uh, in predicting the uh, aflatoxin concentrations. And but it's, uh, as you see here, is uh, they just a lower uh, regression quality and also uh, high uh, lower predictive uh, coefficient of. Uh, determinations and so it's, uh, these models uh, may not be good uh, for uh, uh, screening the uh, aflatoxin samples and the, but, but also uh, these models uh, there is no significant difference with uh, uh, some models there, uh, there are some uh, there is no significant difference uh, with uh, HPLC values uh, but it's, uh, despite the uh, conventional Raman spectroscopy is a uh, uh, produced a slightly better uh, predictive accuracy. Uh, surface NS to Raman spectroscopy is um, uh, more effective and uh, or more, more efficient is, uh, uh, if the uh, more, uh, more consideration is given to the uh, sensitivity and also uh, reprodu reproducibility of spectra and also as a potential improvement of uh, uh, these techniques. And uh, this is a, stat a statistical result of uh, three different uh, chemometric, uh, uh, three different spectroscopic method. And uh, regardless of uh, spectroscopic method, uh, multiple linear regression model and then uh, PLSR models uh, produce the uh, best predictive accuracy and the lower uh, prediction quality. And um, but it's a PCR models actually so compared to other uh, methods they produce uh, very poor uh, predictive accuracy. So, however, so, uh, unlike other spectroscopic methods, FDIR actually so produced uh, uh, comparable research. Even is a uh, uh, first derivative and the second derivative uh, spectra uh, is a uh, produced better result than uh, PLSR models. And then uh, FDIR uh, is a. Uh, uh, Produce the uh, stronger uh, correlation co coefficient than uh, other spectroscoping method, and NIR, NIR actually said, uh, uh, produced a similar result and then similar uh, predictable accuracy and then uh, lower prediction errors uh, compared to those reported in uh, previous study. However, uh, in this study, is uh, uh, NIR is uh, rather worse than other. Uh, uh, spectroscopic method in terms of uh, uh, predictive accuracy and uh, uh, prediction errors. And also, it's, uh, FTIR, even though uh, they produced uh, uh, slightly better uh, predictive uh, uh, 
uh, we showed them Raman spectroscopy. As you see, the previous uh, slide is a Raman spectroscopy. Actually, it's uh, more effective and then uh, even uh, produced a better uh, predictive accuracy. So it uh, seems like it's uh, uh, NIR, uh, FTIR, and the Raman spectroscopy, they are equivalent, uh, equivalent uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, prediction power uh, for measuring aflatoxin uh, concentrations. Uh, conclusion is, uh, the, uh, in conclusion, the uh, Raman spectroscopy method is, uh, appears to be uh, com combined with the uh, uh, chemo measuring models uh, proved to be uh, successfully uh, applicable as an uh, alternative uh, rapid and non-destructive technique. And then uh, classification and quantification uh, models uh, shows uh, uh, good predictable performance and uh, with a uh, high uh, accuracy and uh, prediction, uh, correct classification rate. And then uh, the picture of uh, this Raman spectroscopy should be ideal uh, for the real-time monitoring of uh, critical performance attribute, attributes in controlling the uh, food and feed uh, processing, uh, manufacturing processing using, uh, using corn. And then SELS uh, can be an alternative and a rapid, highly sensitive uh, analytical method for aflatoxin detections. And compared to uh, other spectroscopic method and then uh, conventional Raman spectroscopic method, uh, surface NS Raman spectroscopic technique uh, provides more comprehensive information on the uh, structural and the electronic, electronic properties of aflatoxin uh, molecules uh, for uh, aflatoxin quantifications. And uh, Raman and FTR spectroscopic method are superior uh, to uh, NIR method in terms of uh, predictive accuracy and performance of uh, uh, for, uh, for its aflatoxin quantifications. Uh, Raman is uh, as an easy and uh, rapid and expensive screening system, uh, can be a powerful tool for quality control of uh, uh, grains, including corns, and, and to help to uh, improve the uh, safety of uh, feed and food product uh, uh, supply to uh, consumers. Uh, I appreciate the financial support by uh, National Corn Grow, uh, Growers Association and, then, uh, and also uh, the endowment of the Ohio State University for uh, this project. Thank you. Any questions? Dr. Yes. Lee? Your last conclusion said it was inexpensive. Yeah, it, it's a basically inexpensive. Yes, it's a, just, just. Prepare that for Yes, uh, actually, sir, in our, uh, in our office, actually, sir, the. Oh, the Yes, uh, in our office, actually, uh, the HPSC, we just uh, uh, charge the uh, 50 dollars per samples, and then this Raman spectroscopy just uh, charge the uh, five dollars. And so, uh, basically, uh, the, this this uh, uh, method is uh, doesn't require any uh, uh, preparation uh, step. It's just to use the ground samples uh, without any extraction and uh, without any uh, pretreatment. And so. Uh, basically, so th this is a very, uh, not very expensive uh, uh, analytical method. Yes. You start up on your machine comparatively to the HPLC or something like this. Uh, pardon me? In other words, the cost of setting up your system, let's say this is HPLC or something else. The initial cost. Uh, initial cost? The initial cost. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, actually, sir. Yeah, that, that's uh, the fifty dollars uh, is uh, just, just uh, from the uh, that including the uh, instrument maintenance uh, and also is uh, some reagent uh, uh, reagent uh, and also chemicals uh, cost uh, uh, including. Yes. Yes. How large are those nanoparticles? Uh, nanoparticles, uh, uh, as I said, is uh, uh, actually uh, the nanocrystals is uh, less than ten. Uh, Nanometers and then uh, nano uh, crystals uh, actually uh, they form blocks into uh, nanospheres and the nanospheres uh, uh, is uh, the diameter is uh, 60 and uh, 80 and nanometers. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, there are many different uh, methods to prepare the surface NS the Raman spectroscopic method and our method is uh, seems like it's more reproducible and then in terms of uh, uh, the spectral repeatability. Yes, yes. Sir. You, you get a different spectrum from the non-contaminated corn 
and that's what you're measuring. But can you tell the difference between different corn lines, or do they all appear the same when you're yes, white, uh, yellow corn, whatever? Yeah. The, in terms of uh, so this, this is uh, actually a kind of a screening method, and so as I said, it's uh, uh, the less than uh, 20 ppb and then greater than 20 ppb, ppb is a sample is 100% accurately is a, uh, classified, and then uh, and also is uh, the level of uh, approximation is uh, rather accurately uh, predicted, but it's uh, uh, definitely so we need a confirmation method like uh, uh, HPLC and the, uh, and the, HMS and this method. Yes. So uh, I, I might not understand something correctly, but it looked like the, uh, the principal component analysis consistently did not predict as well as the linear regression. Right. And it looked like on one of the graphs that the group one and group two were partially overlapping. Right. And, and is that because the technique isn't uniformly accurate at quantifying throughout? range of, of concentrations, and, and if that's the case, is that a concern for the very low samples? We want to make the distinction, say, for not safe at 20 ppb range. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in terms of uh, quantification of uh, approximation, it, it's not very accurate, but it's, uh, as I said, it's, uh, even though it's, uh, the group 1 has less than 20 ppb and the group 2 is more than uh, 20 ppb samples, and that uh, those, those two groups are accurately, uh, accurately uh, classified. Uh, of course, uh, depending on the uh, chemometry models, uh, PCA is a principal component analysis model. So it's a, it's a problem of words uh, and because uh, they only is uh, the concern about the, their uh, uh, sample groups. But it's a PLSR is a, the, that technique is a, uh, simultaneously simultaneously consider the. Uh, the sampling group and the, as well as the uh, the, the approximation concentration. So uh, PCR models is uh, I don't want to recommend it. and then PLS uh, uh, technology is uh, like slightly better, uh, uh, much better than uh, P, uh, PCR uh, principal component analysis uh, method. Yes. Rama? Yes. Yeah, yeah Rama spectroscopic method is uh, actually uh, the, uh, we purchased the original price is uh, one hundred thousand dollars, but so we purchased uh, eighty thousand dollars. statistics that we used to, to evaluate the, uh, those chemometrics. Uh, we only do that, for example, if you're using uh, 
Correctly classified five different uh, level of compound in uh, blood samples. Uh, 